everybody. Welcome back to my podcast, The Real Tea. Today we're going to be spilling the real tea on CBT. We have Abidi and we have Narusha here. Before delving into that world of CBT, I think it's super important that we define to our audience sort of what it is and what we're going to be looking at today. Yeah, of course, Veronica, and I'm really glad that you asked this question. So cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT is basically a way to um, target or challenge false or irrational thinking. So as the name suggests, CBT um, combines cognitive therapy, which focuses on your thoughts, and behavioral therapy, which focuses on your actions. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So the combination of the two together, can you kind of explain how it works in sort of a situation? Right. So your thoughts, feelings, and actions, they all interact and influence each other. Mm -hmm. So now imagine a fictional character, Anna, who has to present her thesis um, project in front of a hundred students. So the situation would be Anna having to present um, in front of a hundred students. This would result in thoughts such as, um, you know, my presentation is not good as those who presented in ahead of me, or the audience is not really interested in my presentation. Yeah. Rather, they're probably judging me about the way I look, how I'm speaking, or like um, the way I, you know, dress or something like that. And then this would lead to her emotions, which would consist of fear and lack of confidence. And all of this combined would result in her behavior, which could consist of her having like a stiff posture. Um, not, you know, making eye contact with the audience or speaking like really quietly. So basically, this is where CBT would intervene and change Anna's thoughts and behaviors. Okay, okay. So basically, my question to you now is, how does CBT then take that sort of emotion that Anna's feeling and change her view altogether? Right. So I'm going to reference a paper by Anxiety Canada because I think it just does a great job of explaining what CBT is in really simple terms. So... Um, CBT will target cognition or behavior to produce a better view of the world. So this can be done in two ways. Firstly, we can um, target the behavior through exposure. So going back to the Anna example, Anna could you know start off by presenting in front of a smaller group and then gradually increase um, the number of audience. So this would kind of help um, get rid of that fear and anxiety about presenting in front of a large group of audience. And then another thing that we can do is target the thoughts by making rationalizations. So kind of replacing Anna's thoughts with more positive ones like, you know, if the audience wouldn't really be there if they didn't find her presentation topic to be interesting. True. So, you know, or yeah, the audience is really engaged with the presentation and not really thinking about anything else because they're asking her questions after she was done presenting. True, true. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in terms of that, just focusing on that, there's been a lot of myths about how CBT works. So now that we kind of know the process, one of those myths is that, and Nurusha, this statement is kind of directed towards you. Can you comment on the fact that people say CBT only changes thoughts, but not behaviors? This is actually correct, Veronica. CBT actually addresses your thinking, emotions, behaviors, and physiological symptoms. Like CBT uh, starts by addressing your present problems, and it helps um, clients gain an understanding of a more effective plan, more suitable for them. Um, clients do begin by evaluating their own thoughts and doing some behavioral experimentations um, early on. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So, kind of for our audience, we mm -hmm. wanted to take a look at sort of what a CBT session looks like if they mm -hmm. were to go and try to, you know, have that form of therapy or explore that form of therapy. Right, so when a client initially goes in for their consultation with the therapist, it's the um, initial assessment that is done. And this is really important because it reveals the client's previous and current experiences and their environments. And this really helps the therapist pinpoint what the problem is and where it is. Mm -hmm. And following this, then the therapist and client work together um, to establish an agenda, discuss homework, review progress um, since last um, session, and discuss specific problems that may have you know, arise through, during the last week or and build strategies to address that problem. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and each uh, CBT session is um, is about like 15 minutes and it consists of about 12 to 16 sessions. And the, the since the sessions are more um, client-centered, client the client is an active uh, participant. Um, however, the therapist does regularly monitor like the treatment sessions like and seeing the client's uh, pro progress throughout. Okay, yeah. okay. So I'm like getting the sense that, you know, you do have the opportunity to discuss some of your problems. So the last question I have for you today, and it's based on the fact that my audience here are mostly university students, 
I just want to know what you think or how, like, what kind of research has been done on the effects of CBT on university students? How much has it helped them if it has helped mm-hmm. them? So I'm actually really glad that you brought that up because, as we know, the um, there has been an increase um, in anxiety and depression and, like, mental health-related issues are yeah. increasing, especially among university students because of all the stress that they go yes. through. And I think that CBT is really useful in treating the symptoms um, of these conditions. Yeah, and we do also encourage students to reach out and like find resources at their universities. And students at McMaster University are, are encouraged um, to visit the uh, Student Wellness Center. Um, according to Mullen and his colleagues, um, students can um, access CBT through a phone call and messaging apps. On offering this type of treatment actually has shown a lower in anxiety and depression symptoms um, even um, at a three-month follow-up. Okay, so for all of our listeners at home, you heard it here. Not only can you go in and find a therapist and have sort of a sit-down session, you're also able to, you know, uh, access it from a whole different bunch of mediums, whatever Mm -hmm. makes you feel the most comfortable. Thank you, Abida. Thank you, Abidi. Thank you, Narusha, (laughs) for coming in today. Mm -hmm. I hope this episode helped clear up any sort of questions for our audience back home. Tune in every Thursdays for The Real Tea. (laughs) 